By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against Benjamin from the Netherlands. He is relatively new to old school and he is bringing a mono black deck to the table with some interesting choices. And I am playing against him with a brand new brew. I am playing a deck with four Gaius Leech. Exactly, Gaius Leech. So I'm really looking forward to try this deck out and to see if it actually works. Um, now before I go to the deck decks, I would like to point out that you can also check out the description below and there you will find the timestamp. Click on the timestamp and that will take you straight to the games. And here we are going to continue with the deck decks. And I'm going to start with the deck of Benjamin. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Benjamin. So it's a mono black deck, but he's made some interesting choices. And before I go into them, I would like to point out that if you're playing old school magic on a smaller budget or thinking about playing old school magic, mono black is actually a great way to go just to get started. It's pretty affordable. You know, this list that we see right here, I guess only the sinkholes are kind of expensive and the rest uh, is very, very affordable. Uh, but yeah, let's look at this list. Oh, okay, I guess the Demonic Tutor is, is expensive these days. Um, remember, it used to be an uncommon. In Revise, it's just an uncommon. You know, it's it's the era where we still had good uncommons. Uh, that was that was a good time for Magic. But um, let's go into the actual deck list here. Um, I've chosen to highlight Vampire Bats because I think it's a very cool choice. Uh, it's an 0-1 for 1 black. I think the art is beautiful. You can pump it to 2-1. But of course, it's going to cost you mana, which could be a little bit of a problem here because this is kind of a slide deck approach where you want to have your vampire bats one drop and then you have a lot of two drop options you've got black knight a uh, full play set but you also have two or greater so that's kind of interesting and of course you also have three bat moons so bat moons obviously are going to work very well in this deck especially with vampire bats because that means that you just have that one power flying in the air without the need to pump swamps into that so that's kind of nice of course we see a full play set of hypnotic specters it's the obvious choice for a reason. It's just a very strong card that I'm pretty afraid of playing with green. It's going to be hard for me to kind of deal with this. Um, and then I also see a one-off Fallen Angel, which is quite interesting. Um, it's a flyer as well, and you can sack a creature, and then it gets plus two, plus two. So you can kind of do a lot with that during combat itself. So it's going to be curious to see how that is going to work out. He also has two Unholy Strengths. Um, really nice, and I guess you can... A good target for the Unholy Strength is, again, the Vampire Bats, but also the Urg Raiders. Um, we also see two Junin Efreets, which is quite interesting. You, they don't see a lot of play. It's a 3-3 Flyer. It's a rare, actually, from the Arabian Nights. But the big problem with this card, of course, is that two black upkeep cost. And, and yeah, I think this is, that's going to be difficult for him. I wonder if I can create a situation where I turn all his lands into forests and he won't be able to pay the upkeep for the Junin Freed. That would be a lot of fun. That being said, when I look at this list, I mean, it can go really, really, really fast. So I'm not sure if my green deck is going to be quick enough, but hey, we're going to try and we'll see. It's a really nice, uh, nice list here from Benjamin with some original takes on mono black. Let's take a look at my deck. And here you see a few cards in my deck. I'm playing with a Gaius Leech deck. Now the reason I don't have a deck photo for you is that I've already changed this deck. I've did some, uh, I did some tweaking, not just after this matchup, but after a lot of other matchups as well. In its current state that you're going to watch it in uh, in the video, it is still a mono green build. And uh, it's, it's pretty cool uh, if I say so myself. I'm playing mono green. My tactic is kind of simple. I'm playing with a lot of mana dorks like Birds of Paradise. I hope to put Instal Energy on my Mana Dorks so I can get additional mana and I just want to get to 6 mana as fast as possible because with 6 mana I can play my Gaius Leech and I'm playing with a full playset of Gaius Leech in this deck and uh, in case you don't know what Gaius Leech does, it's one of the coolest creatures in, in green in old school. Uh, it's 3 green to cast in 3 for a summon Gaius Leech. Uh, the power and toughness is star star because it depends on the amount of forests that you have. So, for example, if I have five forests in play, my Gaius Leech is a 5 5. Now, when I attack my opponent with my Gaius Leech, it gains power and toughness equal to the amount of forests that my opponent has. So, you're already thinking, wait a minute, you're playing against a mono black player, so he has zero forests, so you can never attack with Gaius Leech. But luckily, Gaius Leech has another incredibly cool ability. 
you can tap it and then you can change any land that your opponent controls or actually your own land as well and you can change them into forests so i am hoping to turn all those swamps to turn a dark swamp into a nice rich forest into like you know one of those um in dutch you say urbosse one of those like natural original jungles so i'm really looking forward to just create tons and tons of forests uh, on his side of the board. Now, obviously, an instal energy on Gaius Leech also does wonders because that means that I can untap it an additional time in my turn so I can make two forests every turn. Now, because I'm ramping so much mana into my deck, I figured out, you know what, why not just also add two Colossus of Sardias because they're cool and they, they're big. So I've also got two 9 9 Colossus of Sardias in this deck and I also have a fill, um, a safe switch not a fill switch but, <laughs> but a safety switch uh, I, oh no I guess it's a fill safe switch sorry I've got a fill safe switch which is sort of the ages so maybe you're not thinking what what is he talking about well sort of the ages is an artifact from legends for six it comes into play tapped but when it untaps you can tap it and you can sack x amount of creatures on your side of the board so creatures that you control um, and then it deals damage equal to the power of these sacrificed creatures. Now you also have to sacrifice the sword in this process and all the things that you sacrifice with the sword and the sword itself, they're removed from the game, so you can't get them back. But what it does is it deals damage directly to your opponent or actually also to a creature. You can choose to target, uh, but I'm planning on doing it on my opponent and equal to the power of the creature. So if I have a huge Gaius Leech, and a big Colossus of Sardia, then I can probably kill my opponent in one swing with the sword. So I only have one copy of the sword in. It's kind of a, um, what I said, a, a safety fail switch, um, you know, for me to kind of win if it's necessary. I actually hope that I get an opportunity to use it. That would be very cool. Another high casting cost spell that I've put in this deck is Desert Twister. You know, Desert Twister, it would be top removal if it wasn't so extremely expensive. But hey, with this deck, I have so much ramp, I probably can play it. Another side tactic in this deck, kind of connecting to my ramp tactic, is end up playing with Ice Storm. So with the Ice Storms, I'm hoping to slow my opponent down. And then, of course, with my Mana Dorks, I'm hoping to gain tempo and then being able to end slow my opponent down and at the same time go, get to six really quickly and start playing out my big threats so that is the plan so i'm a little bit nervous about the hypnotic specters but hey maybe i'll have to sack a birds of paradise or two who knows so um without further ado let's go to game number one and let's see how this match will end up game number one and we're actually doing a best of five today so usually we do a best of three so that whoever wins two games first wins the match but in this case you will have to win three games so it is a best of five and it looks like my opponent um who's uh, benjamin who's sitting on the right has just taken a mulligan and we're playing according to the london mulligan rules so that means that he can pick up a fresh seven and then he has to choose one card and put that on the bottom of his library if he chooses to keep his hand. I believe I am on the play here as well. So uh, already a good start for me. And this is what I want to see because playing against these, uh, you know, mono black aggressive decks and, and I guess it's more a sly deck than I'm playing against, you know, they, they tend to go really, really quickly dealing a lot of damage at the start of the game, uh, but they also tend to run out of steam. And of course, losing a card here is not very good for Benjamin. So uh, let's see if I can uh, take advantage of that. Starting with the forest, unfortunately for me, no mana dork, no birds of paradise here. And there a swamp into a vampire bats. And what are we gonna see here? Okay, there we see a Sylvan library. I actually didn't discuss that um in the uh, the deck deck part but i'm playing with i believe three sylvan libraries so i just want to use them to make sure that i draw into my lands or mana dorks attacking here is he going to pump it pumping it for once that means i'm going to 19 playing out another swamp and another vampire bats that's pretty cool really nice to see these creatures uh being played very cool creature um i'm just drawing one card here i'm kind of afraid of all the damage that he can do quickly playing an ice storm here taking care of one of his lands and that is great also because he's playing with those vampire bats a good play for him now would be another swamp into a bad moon and there's an urk raiders 
and of course a mistress factory so he's not attacking because he cannot pump his vampire bats so here you can see the downside of the vampire bats you know they're they're all one on itself you have to put black mana in if you want them to grow choosing to draw an extra card you're going to 19 finding a pendle haven and another ice storm interesting here playing it on um playing it on the mistress factory maybe i should have played it on the swamp just denying swamps here for my opponent i've also played at lana or elf look at that a second swamp here he's gonna attack and and this is gonna cost me and that means four damage for me and when you have a sylvan library uh on on the board you're thinking ah oh, this has just cost me a card you know because life is cards when you've got a sylvan there's a strip mine so i'm able to just get rid of a lot of lands but it's not as effective as i would have hoped and i'm playing an instal energy here over my lana where else now remember i can um pump my lana where else to two three and oh i'm going to use it on his swamp of course and will i hit the swamp Ooh, that's important and i still have that panel haven to block the arc so will i hit the swamp here there we go in slow-mo oh not yet in slow-mo and boom that is a hit hasta la vista swampy that is great so i'm untapping my lawn over here because of the instant energy and remember with that pendle haven i can make it two three so that means i can block the earth raiders he cannot pump the vampire bats and if he can oh he's finding another swamp but hey only one damage for me blocking the earth raiders they're taking a hit from the vampire bats going to 10 but I mean, I'm feeling confident here playing another Mishra's Factory. Do I have any follow ups? Yeah, he's showing his graveyard. It's full of lands. I'm sorry, Benjamin. I'm not really letting you play, but I need time with this deck. I now have six, seven mana. Ooh, interesting here. Finding a strip mine, using it to cast his Soul Ring, and now attacking with both of his flyers. There's not much I can do against the flyers. And he's taking the damage for his Urk Raider. Doesn't want to attack with it. That means he has to take two life, going to 18. I'm drawing card number two, just passing turn here. Ay, 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 that's not good for me. And he's playing another Swamp. Look at that. So despite the fact that I've relentlessly have been um, destroying all of his lands, I've played, I think, what, Double Ice Storm, Chaos Orb, Strip Mine, uh, but still he has more than enough lands especially for his deck with a lot of cheaper creatures tapping five will we see a sengir oh it's actually a fallen angel and that is interesting i think he's pointing out that the bats can also be food for that and he's attacking and i'm deciding to double block on the earth raiders and it's just going to die interesting choice here maybe i would have um decided to pay another two life and then next turn sacrifice the urk raiders to the uh, fallen angel because then it gets plus two plus two and i have no flyers and i really wonder what card is in my hand because i mean i've got so much mana i can just play everything out and now he's attacking going full swing here um able to deal six damage i'm going to three life here Ay, 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 this is bad news. Finding a book, I mean, that's nice, but that's not going to help me. Wow. Benjamin, you're actually going to win this game, despite the fact that I kind of felt like I had complete control. But, I mean, if there's no Gaius Leech or other big creature, then what, what can you do? And I really wonder what's in my hand. Yeah, I'm dead. Another forest in my hand. Okay. <laughs> that's a little bit too much mana here um so okay i guess we are going uh to our sideboards remember this is a best of five so it's just the first game we've got a long way to go so hopefully we'll see some gaius leeches in the upcoming matches uh so let's leave this players um let's give them some time to sideboard and we'll get back to this match in game number two game number two in this best of five so benjamin winning that first one i was quite surprised actually because i had so much land removal but hey if there's no follow-up you're just gonna die i mean i put absolutely nothing else on the table except for just destroying his lands 
Um, let's see, are we going to keep? That's the first question. I guess we are starting here with a Lanor Elf, so that's a great start for me here. And let's see what Benjamin brings to the table. Will he have a one drop as well? Will we see more vampire bats? Ooh, this was the opening that I was talking about in the introduction, the opening that I am afraid of. Dark Ritual into um, a Hypnotic Spectre and of course a classic opening, but difficult one. And there is another Lanawar Elves. And wow, look at all that mana ramp. Amazing, but still, I mean, I have the problem of the Hypnotic Spectre. Wow, on Unholy Strength, that means I've got a 4-3 Hypnotic Spectre. And remember, I'm playing Mono Green. I could have blocked here with the birds, losing my Desert Twister. But I guess I decided not to. I wonder what that other card is that's in my hand. And drawing here. Tapping everything. Will we see? Oh, okay. We see another Desert Twister. So I had two Desert Twisters in hand. So I'm able to deal with Hypnotic Spectre. But I have already lost a card in hand. So that's not great for me, of course. And here's a Black Knight. At least not as dangerous as the Hypnotic Spectre. Tapping three here. There's an Evolving Wilds. Picking up a four. Shuffling my hand. Passing turn. And again, I think... When I look back at these games, I think my balance in my mono green deck is not optimal. I've got so much mana ramp. And now I really have to find a Gaius Leech because then I can just stop those two Black Knights. Tapping six. Yes, Gaius Leech. Now remember, Gaius Leech power and toughness are equal to the foresight control. So it's actually a 4-4 four, four, despite me having a lot more green mana. So it is a 4-4 four, four creature. Uh, but more importantly, I can start making forests and I think we're kind of discussing that I'd rather play an instant energy on my gaze leech but this is actually what I want to do I just want to play my gaze leech as quickly as I can and they're tapping three mana another hypnotic specter but my hand is almost empty finding another lana or else passing turn here but of course um, even without cards in hand I still have to take two damage and there he goes I'm going to 12 and he's tapping another three will we see another hypnotic specter a June and a freak interesting choice because I can start making things into forests and then he can no longer pay the two upkeep two black for the upkeep but you know that is still far away and he's he's putting a label here a little token on his swamps to indicate that it's turned into a forest and i'm playing the chaos orb again so will we see another flip and if so on what am i going to flip am i going to flip on the june and Afrit or on the 2-2 hypnotic specter there is another swamp attacking with both and let's see what i'm going to do here and I have to decide now on what am I going to flip. Am I going for the Hypnotic Spectre or the June and Afrit? Let me know in the comments below what you would have chosen. And there we go. And it's a hit. And it is the Hypnotic Spectre that is dying. And he still has his June and Afrit. Deciding to chum block it on a Burt's. Not really sure if that's the best decision. I could have taken the three. Maybe I have the Silver Libraries in the back of my mind. And of course, end of turn, turning another of his basic lands into a forest, just finding a Mishra's factory and passing turn here. And it looks like Benjamin still has more than enough swamps to pay for the Ifrit. And let's see what he's going to do here. Ooh, playing a Paralyzed. And that means that he can start attacking now with his Black Knights. And because of that first strike, it's going to be tough. Actually, just throwing chum blocking with two elves uh, just because they have a lot of mana and I'm, I'm on nine I mean maybe flipping on the hypnotic specter wasn't the right decision and in his turn I'm already changing a swamp into a forest 
And I'm doing that because that way I can kill his uh, June and Efreet. Actually, it is dead because in his upkeep, he can't pay the two black. And now we can attack with his two black knights, but I have my Mishra's factory that I can animate and pump itself to 3-3. Three, three. That's probably what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to 7, deciding to kind of keep my Lanower Elf. And playing a Sylvan. And changing his last swamp into a forest so he only has forests right now and this is exactly what i want to do with this deck but i am on seven then again his only direct damage in this deck is drain life and for drain life he needs um he needs swamps so i wonder if he has a terror maybe that he can use and i'm actually attacking him now because the gaius leech has power and toughness when he's attacking equal to the force of my opponent and benjamin right now is five four so it's a five five so as you can see he's taking five damage going to 15. wow finding another mistress factory and attacking you're being very conservative i don't want to attack with the mistress factories yet i just want to keep them to block and there is a single swamp Paying two here, a demonic tutor. Is he going to find something? The problem is that he has four forests left. He doesn't have any black mana. And next turn, of course, I can make his last swamp into a forest. Does he have something in his deck? Maybe a Nevernurl's disc. He's not playing with power. Or else he could have looked up a Mox Jet. That would have been a great card in this in this situation. And I'm untapping the Gaius Leech. And I wonder if I'm going to attack now with the... Um... Oh yeah, I was already thinking. I'm drunk too. Of course not. I mean, I'm on 7. I wonder if I'm going to attack with my Mishra's Factory. Because I can just pump it. And I just can also keep one... Um behind as to block and i'm actually changing his his uh, swamp into a forest and oh i'm animating two of them that is interesting probably deciding that i'm going to sack my lanower elf if he attacks although i mean i'm on seven i can take a hit of two more i guess it's not like i'm playing against the burn deck if he can if he can somehow get rid... Yeah, I'm just dealing 5 damage here. Ooh, and there's a Maze of If. Ooh, and now I think, in all honesty, I think I made a mistake here. I think I should have... Oh, look at that, but he doesn't have enough time. He's only on 5. I can just attack with everything. And what I wanted to say is I think what I should have done is play the... Maze of If, and then just attack with the Gaius Leech, untap it with the Maze, so I could have also changed it into a forest. But anyway, I think this is game, and this is game. So that means it's 1-1. He didn't have enough time for the Nevernurl's Disc. That's probably the card that he uh, looked up. But unfortunately for Benjamin, he didn't have that extra turn because I decided to go uh, very aggressively on him with those Mishra's Factories, but that means it's 1-1. So uh, let's continue to game number three. Remember, we are playing a best of five. So, um, you know, we'll need we'll need some more games to, uh, to find out whose deck is the strongest in this matchup. Game number three, and it's 1-1, so it's kind of exciting. And uh, we are doing this best of five. So the first player that wins three games wins this matchup, but that could take a while. Interesting... Um, to see in that second game what can happen when I manage to not die and uh, and get my deck into that mid-game level, get the Gaius Leeches out, and then even against the mono-colored black deck, just a Gaius Leech can have an effect, transforming too many forests of my opponent, uh, too many swamps of my opponent into forests. Um, well, let's take a look. At least Benjamin gets to start here, which is a huge advantage, um, being a more aggressive deck. And he's decided to keep, I decided to keep, so we can get going. There's just a single swamp. There is a quick strip mine here, taking care of the swamp. I really want to slow Benjamin down and drag this into mid game. There's another swamp, no creature yet from his side, which is good news. And I'm playing a Lanower Elves. 
and passing turn here. And there's a Mishra's Factory and a Vampire Bats. And there's a Pendlehaven. That means that I can now pump my Lunawar Elves to 2 3. There's another Lunawar Elves. And let's see what is going to happen. Tapping 2 here. And there is that Bat Moon. I talked a little bit about that in the deck tech that I think Bat Moon and Vampire Bats is a really nice combination. You no longer have to pump your swamps into the Vampire Bats. It's now a 1 2 because of the Bat Moon. And let's see. Wanting to tap 3 here, perhaps thinking about casting an Ice Storm. Looks like I've changed my mind. Look at my hand again. I'm a little bit in the tank here. Oh, wow. This card is brutal. Playing out a life force. And this is definitely a card that came from the sideboard. It's an enchantment for two green. And for another two green, you can counter target black spell. And that is, of course, devastating for my opponent. On top of that I decide to attack for one, not choosing uh, to use my Pendlehaven because I want to keep that. Then again, if I use my Pendlehaven and Lanawer to block the factory, I can no longer use my Life Force. So I think this attack uh, is a mistake. A really, really big mistake. And there's a second Mishra's factory here. Well, really big, but it's, it's, it's a mistake. I should have kept the Lanawer open. Of course, Mishra's Factory, nothing I can do against that. And can Benjamin actually play under the Life Force? Can he play out underneath the Life Force? Maybe he can. I mean, he has a Flyer on the board that I cannot block, so he can just deal damage. Now he has a Mishra's Factory. He's actually going to play a Paralyze. Am I going to counter the Paralyze? Is that really worth it? I guess I am. Then he can hit me for three in total because of that bad moon. And I kind of like the way how Benjamin is playing here. He's just he's just forcing me to make tough decisions. And there I go. Interesting. Taking care of a Mishra's factory, not of a swamp. And that makes sense. Another Mishra's factory, though. Playing another life force. Again, countering, but opening myself up to another 3 damage. And I think what Benjamin really realizes very well is that he is the aggro player. He just needs to keep hitting. And, I mean, basically he's trading a Paralyze for uh, 3 life, which is not too bad. Okay, here is a Hurricane. I have to play it for 2 because of the Bad Moon. That means I'm dealing 2 damage to myself as well. But I'm also keeping my Life Force counter capability online here. And, I mean, I'm playing with Crumbles in this deck, so I guess I just need to find Crumbles or more Ice Storms. Attacking here, pumping it to 3, taking more damage again, going to 8. So, despite the Life Force, I'm in a very tough position here. And I have to admit, when I played it, oh, here I go. I mean, I just need something to block those factories. But my Gaius Leech, it looks like a big creature, but actually it's not. I only have 3 Force. This is a 3-3 three, three creature. Oh, man. And now he's got four mana. I cannot counter. His hand is probably filled with, with good stuff. If he could just play a flyer. Let's see what he's going to do. Is he going to choose to attack with the factory? Oh, he's playing a Hypnotic Spectre. And that, that is a problem. And there's another forest. And that means I'm probably going to take two damage and lose a card. Actually, three damage because of the Bat Moon. Wow. I am... Interesting. I'm changing a swamp into a forest, probably because I had that Chaos Leech to cast. And as you can see, I've kind of gone away from the Life Force plan. Forced to, actually. Forced to go away from the Life Force plan. Attacking with both. Probably going to block uh, the Factory here, of course. He's actually not attacking with the Factory. I think that's a good decision. Dealing 3 damage here. Colossus of Sardia going to the bin. I'm going to go to 5. And we haven't really seen Colossus of Sardia do anything in these matchups. I mean, it's a super cool card, but maybe it's not in its place here in this brew. Another Gaius Leech. I mean, this is great. This is what I want to do, but I mean, I'm going to die. I need to change the swamp into a forest. 
Hopefully he's not going to draw into another swamp or I'm dead. This is a misplay. Why am I doing this? They're, they seem to be little hammers. Okay, great. <laughs> no, sorry, Benjamin. That's nice. It's really nice. I'm just a little annoyed with myself here. This is a huge misplay because he can now pump his um, vampire bets and I'm dead. Wow. So I have to admit, good play here from Benjamin playing uh, out of that under that uh, life force. And uh, yeah, I'm dead, I'm dead. And that's a bad decision because I had Gaius Leeches to block his Mishra's workshop. So I don't really understand why I didn't just turn his swamp into a forest so that he couldn't pump his vampire bats. At least that would have given me one more turn. I don't think um, that would have made a big difference, but still, you know, one more turn, things can happen. Um, what can I say? Let's go to uh, to game number four. So it's 1-2 uh, now for Benjamin. Game number four, and uh, it's 1-2 for Benjamin. And I get to start because I lost playing a Lana Ralph's turn one. At least that's a good feeling. Look at that. Fantastic here. This is the start I want to have. Playing a Sylvan Library and playing a lot of Wells. And we're in turn two. Look at the amount of permanence I have. Passing turn here. And that without any use of power. We see a Black Knight from the side of Benjamin. Oh, and it's just fantastic to have that Sylvan. That's what my deck wants to do. Drawing a card here. Playing a Soul Ring. Tapping for six. Boom! And there's a Gaius Leech. Turn three Gaius Leech. This is what my deck wants to do. I mean, when I'm looking at this, it puts a smile on my face. You know, when you have a plan with your deck and it works, the best feeling. The best feeling. Rearranging my cards a little bit. And now it's difficult for Benjamin. Uh, obviously, he's going to swing in. Or obviously, but I think he's going to swing in with the Black Knight. Uh, and there we see that special land. Uh, beautiful art. I think it takes away a land walk ability. Ah, oh, man, I can't remember the name, but it's basically, it's a land from Legends, and it gets one black and has another ability, just like uh, a card like Hammerheim, but then the Black Edition, or Tolaria. Anyway, what we see here uh, is a sinkhole on my forest, and that's an interesting way to put pressure on my Gaius Leech, because remember, my Gaius Leech has power and toughness equal to my forest, but man, do I see a life force there? Another... Wow, and that is harsh. That is brutal for Benjamin, that... He has to play against a life force again after having to face a life force in game three where he showed that he can still win. So he's, I mean, he can deal with the life force. But in this case, it's earlier in the game. I've got two green open with that Birds of Paradise and um, that Lanoir Elves. Tapping for four, he never knurls disc. Perfect answer. If he can get the disc to go off. Oh man, then I'm in deep, deep trouble. Playing another Mishra's Factory. Ooh, playing Desert Twister here. Oh, ho, ho. that means his disc is gone. Oh, I'm sorry, Benjamin, because I think that was the best possible play. Oh, man. And maybe you're wondering why I'm um, I'm using the Gaius Leech ability at my, uh, on my turns instead of on his end step. I just want to make sure that he doesn't, that he has as little black sources as possible. So... Before he starts his turn, I want to make sure I've turned one of his swamps into a forest. You know, because he has a lot of cards that acquire double black. So I just want to I just want to make sure that I kind of cut off the double black option as soon as possible, even with a life force on the battlefield. Interesting. What is he going to do? He's just going to swing in, it seems. One of the things, of course, I don't know his hand, but an interesting play would be Paralyze on one of my mana dorks in a previous situation and then I would have to choose to counter it or not just like what he did in the previous game That was a very uh, interesting very good tactic actually to look at and there's a gay as the gay's leech action again I don't mind the standstill because I'm just slowly changing all of his lands into forests and When that's done and of course I've got the life force to protect my gay leech from any removal and once that's done, I'm going to trample over him with the Gaius Leech. That's my, my plan at this point. And I wonder how many Neverneuro's Discs Benjamin is playing. Because I think my hand is pretty empty. So if you can just play another Neverneuro's Disc, I do think that's the best answer to the current board state. 
And maybe I can find an instant energy. I'm okay finding a forest instead. And I'm playing very conservatively. I'm choosing not to draw extra cards. I'm, I'm really trying to save up my life, trying to keep my mana open to counter all the black spells that he may cast. There we see another Mishra's Factory. Of course, that's something I cannot counter. But I mean, he's got two Mishra's Factories and four forests and he's kind of stuck. And of course, I'm gonna change another one again. And playing another Gaius Leech. And that means there is now maybe a little opening. Although I still have two green open with the Lunar Rails and Birds of Paradise to counter with my life force. And it's going to be interesting. Obviously he's in the tank trying to think of, okay, what is my out? How can I play towards my out? I mean, there is a little opening now that so many green sources are tapped. He's showing his Pestilence that he simply cannot play out. I mean, that would have been a great card. But it's not going to work because he doesn't have any black mana. And I think, I mean, don't say it's over till it's over, but oh, there's an instal energy. And that means I can change it into a force and I can swing in. And that's exactly what I do, attacking with two Gaius Leeches. And they are now 6-6 six, six each because my opponent, Benjamin, now has 6 forests in play. That means he takes 12 damage and he's going to 8. I wonder what's going to happen playing a Swamp here. I mean, the thing... I mean, when you have a mono black deck and you see your opponent playing a life force, I mean, I kind of feel for Benjamin here because it's really hard. And again, in the previous game, he won despite the life force. That was really an achievement. But it looks like we're going to get a 2-2 here, which is nice because that means we're going to have a fifth game to see who's going to win this, this duel. Wow, playing a Colossus of Sardia, probably just because I can. I mean, I do realize it's not the best decision, but, um, you know, when you can play a Colossus, you want to play a Colossus. And, um, yeah, I'm passing turn here i think or is it already oh no he still has two life he has two life i've given him an opening i mean but what could he have i mean he needs a black balance um no there's there's i don't think there's anything he can do okay he's casting a dark ritual and another one playing urk raider still having two in the pool and tapping another three is he going to do so? It would be spectacular. Oh, nice. Saying your vampire is always nice to see. But uh, yeah, it looks like that's it. And then it can just attack and, uh, and get the victory here. <clears throat> so uh, that's it. That's um, game number four. And it's I can tell you it's really nice to see a board with Gaius Leeches and Colossus of Sardia finally being able to do something. Um, and the best thing about this is it is 2-2. So that means we're going to go to game number five. Game number five. And it is 2-2. Two, two. This is a thriller here. 2-2. Two, two. And I mean, that, I mean, game number four was a very convincing win for me with that, you know, amazing turn two where I had Anna Sylvan. And a Soul Ring and a Birds of Paradise. What's that? Anyway, it was just crazy. Uh, it does mean that Benjamin gets to start again. And every time he starts, he tends to win. So let's see what's going to happen now. Attacking with the Vampire Bats. Actually not pumping it up because he wants to play that Black Knight. And there's another Sylvan Library for me. And that's a big advantage. But he's got four damage on the table. The question is, is he going to use the mana to pump his Vampire Bats or is he going to play something else out? I think a Bad Moon would be really bad news for me at this point. Uh, playing first his third mana source, a Mishra's Factory. And attacking here. Is he going to pump it? Actually, just doing two damage because he wants... Oh, interesting. Royal Assassin. We haven't seen the Royal yet in this matchup. 
And look at that, I'm forgetting that I have a Sylvan library. Okay, that is, uh, <laughs> that is not the best play ever. Anyway, playing another land. And I mean, what can I do really? Okay, I can do quite a lot actually. Okay, playing a Birds of Paradise and playing a Chaos Orb. And then the question is, on what am I going to flip? I, I, am I going to do the Royal? I mean, it's not really dealing any damage. Then again, a Royal Assassin when you're playing with the Gaius Leech deck. Ooh, interesting. Strip mine. Stripping. Taking care of my Mishra's Factory here. And he's probably just going to swing in for a lot here. Again, not using his Vampire Bats. Instead, playing a Juna and a Freed. A 3-3 creature. He needs to pay 2 black during his upkeep. And I am going to flip. But on what am I going to flip here? Of course, a Royal is a pain. But shouldn't I go for the... Maybe a Lance that he has to sack his Junan. At least it's a hit. On what am I flipping on the Royal here? I, I, I understand why I want to get rid of the Royal because I, I can't even use my Birds of Paradise. So maybe... Oh, okay. Now it makes sense. Having that Ice Storm. Now it makes sense. So now he has to sack that one. Okay, okay, okay. Now I understand it. Because I was kind of like, if I wouldn't have had the Ice Storm plan, I probably would have been better off focusing on taking care of a Swamp and then also taking care of the June. But look at that, attacking here. Two from the Factory, two from the Black Knight, one from the Vampire Bats. That is five damage in total. Going on to 11. And I mean, at least I could, I, I have six, yeah, I've got six mana. Hopefully I can cast something big here but something big is not two mana. I mean, a life force is not going to help me here because I'm behind. I'm actually passing turn here, not doing anything. Maybe I've got a crumble in hand to take care of the factory. Let me hope. And I mean, I can block with the Mishra's factory. If he attacks with the Black Knight... And he's just attacking, I believe. Did I just play play the Mishra's Factory? Because then it has summoning sickness and I can't pump it. Hmm. This is difficult. It looks like Benjamin is a little bit in the tank as well. I mean, I'm on 11. He wants to keep the pressure. Ooh, a death grip. But he doesn't have a lot of black mana, so maybe that can save me. And he cannot counter yet, so let's hope I can cast something big. Tapping six, will we see a Gaius Leech again? No, we see a Desert Twister. What am I going to Desert Twist? It's so difficult. I mean, are you going to go for the Death Grip or are you going to go... I guess you have to go for, for the Death Grip, but... It is interesting how... Every time when I have a solution, I mean, Benjamin is, is putting me into these difficult positions. If he wouldn't have played a death grip, it would have been easy. Well, even then it would have been difficult because you could also say, let's take care of a Mishra's Factory. Let's take care of a Swamp, for example. Playing a Crumble. So that's a Crumble I talked about earlier. At least being able to take care of a Mishra's Factory. But I am taking four damage. Two damage from the Vampire Bats. And I think Vampire Bats... I mean, it's the MVP. We've seen it in almost every game, and it's dealt damage in almost every game. And, I, I, yeah, it's interesting. Sometimes it attacks for zero. Okay, I admit that, but it's interesting to look at. Um, install energy on my birds. Oh, and I'm making a mistake here. But I guess Benjamin is allowing me to correct it. And, I mean, we're playing, we're playing kind of laid back. And uh, playing my my life force, but again, the thing is with I mean, counter magic is nice, and I'm sure counter players listening to this know that that counter magic is very strong. But when you're behind, it's not great because it doesn't change the current board state. So there we see an attack. Probably have to take two more damage. Going to five here, 
And I think Vampire Bats is going to kill me. I mean, I will have to jump at a certain point um, with my Birds of Paradise. And I think one of the things that I took away from this uh, matchup, and, um, you know, like I said in the introduction, I've changed um, uh, the deck. And one of the things I've done, I've added Cockatrices to the deck because it just needs some more body up in the air. I cannot just rely on a play set of Gaius Legions to win me the game. Um, just played a Lana or Elves now. But it's, it's not looking good for me. Despite the life force, despite the Sylvan, despite the mana that I have. I mean, I, I think that Benjamin is just going to swing in with the Vampire Bats. I mean, I can take another hit. I'll, I'll go to three. Remember, he also plays with Drain Life. So maybe it's even better to already chump uh, the Vampire Bats. I mean, we haven't seen the Drain Life once, but I believe it's in his deck. We saw it on a deck picture. And of course, we don't see each other's decks before we, we, we start the game. That would be ridiculous. But uh, I get the deck lists afterwards. And he's attacking, deciding not to chump block. Thinking, I'm still on three. I can do it. Can I find a hurricane? I mean, a hurricane for one. I play with hurricanes in this deck. But I think attacking again. Deciding to jump this time because I want to be able to play a hurricane if I draw into one. On three life. And I think I already knew that I lost because of the Sylvan. <laughs> but uh, passing turn nonetheless. By the way, I guess it's not true what I'm saying because next turn I could find an answer. Going to one, so I just need to find an answer now. The thing is with one life, I can no longer play my Hurricane. And is it again a Colossus of Sardia? Of course, the Colossus of Sardia. And I, I think if there's if there's one thing I've learned about this matchup is that Colossus of Sardi is just not great, at least not in this in this matchup. Uh, but wow, okay, Benjamin. I mean, isn't that cool that you're gonna you're winning this one on your vampire bets? And I mean, that is fantastic. It's nice to see cards that just don't see a lot of play uh, uh, getting results. And, um, okay, he's just wanting to play as many cards in his last turn as possible. Dark Ritual, pumping one into the Vampire Bats and, uh, and killing me. Well done. And um, that is the end of this match. Woo! 2-3. Uh, Benjamin, congratulations. You're taking the victory. And here we see your deck picture on the background. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed this match. Uh, let me know what you think of these best of fives. I've done them before. I guess I could do them more uh, frequently. I really, really enjoy them because, I mean, we all have these games where you, you know, you don't draw land or just have bad luck or your opponent is just pulling crazy good. And when you're play playing a best of three, that of course has a bigger impact and playing a best of, uh, playing a best of five can kind of give you that space. Um, so yeah, I like it. Let me know in the comments below if you like it as well. And while we're still looking at Benjamin's uh, deck photo in the background, I would like to thank you for watching and point out that you can help Timmy Talks, you can help the channel by leaving a like, subscribing, clicking the notification bell, that really helps also, leaving a comment, sharing this video and all other videos on your socials if you like them and you want your friends to look at them too. And of course, we also have a Patreon page where you can support Timmy Talks financially. And I'm really, really happy with Patreon. I wanna thank all my patrons. I already have 40 plus patrons. I'm super happy. We're actually going to uh, have our first little mini tournament with the patrons, really looking forward to that. If you wanna check out what's going on, click on the link, check out Timmy Talks Patreon and see how you can support the show. Uh, for now, thank you for watching and let's go to the end scroll. Let's check out the patrons of Timmy Talks.
Ik het als ik het zomaar kan zien.